Good evening. This is the July 12th, 2018 meeting of the North Hampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the council president and I'll be presiding. These proceedings are being audio and video recorded. And we'll begin as we always do with public comment. Um, this is your chance to speak on any subject. We ask that you only keep it to uh, three minutes or less and also realize that it's your time to give your opinion and we don't engage in a back and forth with you. So I'll start with the people I have on the list and then we'll open it up to anyone who has not signed up. The first person is Michael Tetro. Oh, Mr. Tetro, you might be here for the pup for the hearing. Exactly, yes. Do you prefer to wait for that? <laughs> All right. So then we'll go to Tom Burton. Mr. Burton, if you give your name and address for the record, please, and the floor is yours. Tom Burton. I live over on 81 Con Street, otherwise known as uh, Toasty Towers these days. Um, I, I, I'm here because of the issue with the air conditioning in the buildings and the fact that the director of housing ordered them removed and not, had not offered effective air conditioning. The things that she had offered are marginal at best. And through public pressure and public embarrassment, she's rescinded um, what she had, uh, her policy. But she hasn't given up on the idea. She's as much as said so to some other people. That, you know, she's just going to go through the regs and make sure that when she does it again, that you know, she, can, she can get away with it. So in any case, I'm here to plead for you folks to do something about that. Because this is a, this is a I mean, I'm 66. I'm, reasonably healthy for an old guy, but there are folks over there that are 30 years older and more that uh, don't have the stamina or the energy <laughs> to, to come down here and let people know that they're living in apartments which are basically thermal masses. That building over there, that cement roof, you know, soaks up energy through the course of the day and does not dissipate it efficiently at night. It can get very, very hot over there. My own apartment over at Salvo will reach up to three digits if I didn't do something about it. And um, it's, it was ill-considered and, you know, ill-timed and very, very, I think, in my opinion, a, a health hazard and very dangerous, not only for myself, but there's 190 people over at Salvo. There's how many people? Over there? 60 apartments. There's 60 apartments over here. It's a sizable chunk of the community that's been put in danger by a policy which is, you know, bizarre at its outset. And delivered without warning at the beginning of the first heat wave. Um, it's, it's something that could turn into a tragedy very, very easily. So I hope you guys will, you know, Mary Ann has evinced an interest in this as well. And this is really something, this, this person is not fit for the job that she has under these conditions. So I hope you guys will do something about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Is there anyone else who has not signed up would like to give public comment at this time? Ms. Moulton, please. My name's Sharon Moulton, and I live at Yankee Hill in Leeds. And I just wanted to tell everybody that something historic is going to happen on Saturday, right on City Hall steps, that at noontime on Saturday, our representative, Jim McGovern, is going to sign a historic pledge supporting the abolition of nuclear weapons. And the, my understanding is that there are going to be a half a dozen or more candidates for state offices that are going to be there to sign, too. And if you come a little before noon, the Raging Grannies are planning a be on being there at 1130 to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to give public comment? Please. My name's Gabe. I'm sorry I didn't sign up. I wasn't here. Um, I just wanted to ditto the sentiment about McDonald House and Salvo House with the air conditioners. Um, as a nurse in the community, when I heard about the issue, um, I was very taken aback by it because that was a public health um, emergency to me. Um, and the messages going out to the residents of these communities, you know, happened on May 2nd when things started to get hot. Um, so I wanted to support the scrutiny over Kara Clifford and her overseeing of these um, properties. Um, I met with some of the tenants on Monday um, and I just wanted to come and support them as a nurse in the community and as a community member in Northampton um, and back, um, back their feelings and sentiment about uh, Kara Clifford and her um, kind of 
incompetence around this issue and other issues that um, we hope to bring forth in the future. So I just wanted to ditto, Mr. Burton. Okay. Appreciate those comments. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to provide public comment before we start? Yes, sir, please. I'm not actually a Northampton resident. I'm from Ashfield. Um, Please give your name and address. Aaron Nelson, 395 Beltingville Road. Um, and I'm here to support the 16-year-old voting age bill. Um, I was the person who introduced it, the um, town's resolution up in Ashfield and um, helped in Shelburne. Um, and I would urge the council to pass it, um, as I'm sure you've heard many good reasons to do before. Um, and I would also just like to emphasize that um, it will require planning beyond just the initial passage of the bill if it gets that far. And I would urge the council to um, make sure that the groundwork is laid with the school committee and with the principals to make sure that teenagers will be encouraged to use that right to vote because it's not just that it's a trickle up. If people vote the first time, they'll keep voting. If people don't vote the first time, they'll, they won't vote that next time and the next time after that. So making sure as many people get into the system when possible and having policies in place to support that is really important. Um, so yeah, I would urge the council to support it and I know I've talked with some of you, and you guys are doing good work, so thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else for public comment before the council convenes? Uh, if not, we will go into session. I'd ask for the, the roll of the council, please. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Here. And Councilor Shara. Here. All right, so we're convened. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is a public hearing. This is um, from National Grid, um, Verizon, a poll <coughs> for Cook Avenue. This is number 26019356 uh, for that location. We're holding a public hearing. Um, do I hear a motion to open the hearing on this? <coughs> Second. Okay, all those in favor open the hearing. Say aye. 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 Those any abstentions, hearing is open. Um, we have a representative from National Grid, sir, would you like to yes. describe the request? Hello, my name is Michael Tatro, I work for National Grid. Um, this evening I'm seeking permission to set a poll on Cook Avenue across the street from 14 Cook Avenue. There's a poll number 14. Um, that poll is feeding an apartment complex, Laurel, Laurel Ridge, and the apartment complex is down a hill from the road, so the wires service wires crossing the road at an angle going downhill. It's, we don't have our proper clearance, so we would like to set another pole on the east side of Cook Ave in the town right away to raise that wire up to make it safe for everybody. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, Council Dwight. Uh, I, I presume because that's a major bypass for trucks and other, uh, other, other I mean, larger units, that are driving by, is that why you need the uh, higher clearance? Yes, to put it within our, you know, so standards. Okay, because I mean, currently, obviously, things have been going back and forth. Well, it's it's up on the end, it's it's um, east of Hatfield. Right. So it's, you know, it doesn't get the huge amount of trucking, but it's it's a hazard, it should be okay. fixed. What, what's the current clearance? Do you have an It's idea? supposed to be 16 feet. 16 feet, that's right. Probably around 14 or 15 now. Or less. Oh. Uh, excuse me, it's supposed to be 18 feet. Oh, 18. 18 feet over the road. Okay. 16 feet over the parking lot. I also work for National Grid. I figured. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. No, I mean, that, uh, I, I think that is a good critical thought and, and a worthy project. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, thank you. Is there a motion to close the yeah. public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, just determined that whereas normally these petitions then appear later on the consent agenda, um, for whatever reason, the petition does not appear on the consent agenda tonight for actual approval. Um, so does our administrative system have any information? Well, normally the action would be to approve a poll petition from National Grid for mm -hmm. Cook Avenue. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, due to I'll move to approve. I think point. that since this is actually posted on our agenda, it is would be in order to have a motion on it. So, Councilor Carney, I'll second. Second. 
Seconded by Councilor Dwight. Any discussion on granting this petition? Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that's been granted. You're all set. Thank you for thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, updates from me, none. Any updates from committee chairs? Any women announcements from councilors this evening? None? Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, do you have any communications? None? Uh, so we'll proceed to resolutions. We have one. Um, I will read it into the record. This is R18097, a resolution to lower the voting rate age for Northampton municipal election, sponsored by uh, the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission and Councillor William H. Dwight. Whereas the right to vote is elemental to democracy, and that right should be protected and guaranteed to all qualified citizens. And whereas 16 and 17 year olds possess the same critical analytic intelligence as 18 year olds, and whereas in Massachusetts, 16 year olds have been deemed able to consent to sexual intercourse, obtain a learner's permit and driver's license, get married with parental consent, work a full time job, and pay taxes. And whereas Austria, Argentina, Brazil, Scotland, Switzerland uh, lowered their, their voting rate age to 16 for municipal and in some cases national elections and studies showed that the younger voters were no less informed than their older counterparts. And whereas the largest portion of Northampton's municipal budget is the school budget and whereas most people voting in Northampton did not go through the modern Northampton public school system, but most 16-year-olds living in Northampton currently are in that school system, giving them an important and unique perspective on school issues. And whereas studies have shown 16-year-olds have been the largest age demographic to closely follow certain votes, such as uh, following the Scottish referendum to leave the United Kingdom, and whereas Early voter engagement increases civic participation later in life, which is vital to a democracy. And whereas turnout among all voters in the United States is decreasing, and a push to vote is much needed for younger citizens. And whereas younger citizens are demonstrating the desire to influence the government that serves them by demonstrating for sensible laws to prevent gun violence, and whereas expanding suffrage to people who previously were not able to vote is good for democracy by every measure, and whereas Massachusetts legislation has advanced a civic education requirement to promote critical thinking and participation among young people. And whereas 16-year-olds may now pre-register to vote in Massachusetts, which may provide a logistical framework for their local participation, now therefore be resolved that the sponsors call upon the Northampton City Council to petition the Massachusetts legislature to allow the city of Northampton to establish a minimum voting age for residents of Northampton of 16 years for all municipal elections. Is there a motion to approve this resolution? So moved. Is there a second? second? Made and seconded. So, discussion. Councilor Dwight. The, um, as some of you know, this has been, um, and as Aaron commented, this, is, this has actually been an ongoing conversation uh, throughout the Commonwealth now for several years. Um, uh, and attempted by communities such as Lowell and some other communities and um, uh, Aaron's experience in Asheville um, was thwarted at a time uh, not all that long ago. This, the resolution was uh, the brainchild of, of um, uh, local teenagers who uh, work in the, who participate in the mayor's uh, <coughs> And it gained particular energy and uh, urgency after around March 24th, which is when in Northampton we saw perhaps one of the largest, if not the largest demonstration in decades that was held here in Northampton that was uh, instigated, managed, and presented by people 18 and under in the community. Mm -hmm. um, now, back in the day when the voting age was 21, there was a certain relevance, of course, that at the time uh, that was during the Vietnam War. And there were people who were being drafted into the war, dying in that war, or fighting and participating in that war, and becoming, it being harmed by that war, 
who had absolutely no say, had no agency in the in that in the prosecution of that war. They didn't get to vote for the people who sent them off to go fight for the for their country putatively. And uh, the American citizens started to realize may, maybe that's wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with that. There's the, the, the fact that these are people that we consider adults in virtually every other fashion, but at the same time, they were being deprived of their suffrage. And we lowered the voting age to 18. And now we're talking about 16, particularly for municipal elections. And, and at a time when, when what actually prompts this kind of sense, uh, again, of urgency is that we're on the back end of an election that, and we're experiencing the con consequences of an election that had remarkably low participation. There's a certain cynicism that starts to develop later on about the, the quality and value of a vote. And we, here we have a cohort that's literally asking for the opportunity to participate. A cohort that, uh, it's interesting, all the pushback, of course. <laughs> We've heard these arguments before, there, but the echoes of the same arguments is that they don't pay taxes. It's simply not true. They do, but that's actually not a qualifier to vote. We got rid of that some, time, some centuries ago. You don't have to be a taxpayer to vote. They aren't sophisticated enough. Does that sound familiar? Uh, for women and African Americans who who wanted suffrage, they were denied the same reason. There were there were IQ tests or poll tests in order to prevent African Americans who were qualified to vote from voting. And then the cynic in me wants to say, if intelligence were or intelligence or sophistication were literally the guideline, I don't think we would have seen the consequences of the most recent election if that were true. So it, it, the other issue is that uh, they are too easily influenced to vote. This is the argument that was pushed against women, that they were going to be, they were just going to vote the way their husbands voted. That turned out to be a fallacy, but it, point in fact, it doesn't matter. If they did, it didn't matter. That was not a, in order to qualify to vote currently in the United States, you have to be 18, a U.S. citizen, and in some states, not a felon. That's it. You don't have to be handsome, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to pay taxes, you don't have to be smart, you don't have to be anything other than a citizen. And we have a cohort here who have the cognitive abilities to make discretionary decisions, who actually have a desire for agency. And we're, I think it's appropriate that we offer them the opportunity to experience what civic engagement actually is and what democracy arguably is, is not necessarily demonstrably so. But I, I think after March 24th, I think the energy, not only locally, but nationally and hopefully statewide, once we go and petition, should come to that, and, and essentially that's what this is a request for the council to consider a petition um, to the legislature to amend the charter to allow for a 16-year-old vote, that hopefully what Aaron experienced in Asheville will not happen here. Hopefully, legislators will be a little more receptive. Now, normally what I would do in the accepting of this, it does not require us to do anything. It's just that we accept the, the uh, invitation, as it were. And I had a conversation with the mayor, the city solicitor, with the council president to talk about what that would look like should it come to it soon if we were going to draft a petition. And we decided, given the circumstances, first of all, we are required by charter to do charter review um, for a variety of things. So rather than throw this up in front of the legislature and then throw up some more later on, we thought that we'd combine it as a package. Another compelling reason for not rushing into this is that we have no one to guide this through the legislature or the Senate. There's no, we have no representation. North Hampton's in the unique situation where we actually have no one carrying our banner on, on Beacon Hill. And also given the fact that the legislators who are there aren't there. They're about to move on. So the hope is, is that we'll, I will come back at some point, hopefully with some co-sponsors, to um, draft a petition at a time that's uh, more conducive and ask 
you all to consider uh, in the debate to consider approving that and sending it on. But it, it, with this resolution, simply to accept the request of the Youth Commission to consider this. So I hope, I hope that you will accept it. Thank you. Any other comments on this? Um, well, I, I will say that um, I, I appreciate Councilor Dwight's comments and uh, agree with everything you said. I think you spoke eloquently about essentially what we owe a group of potential voters and what our democracy could give to them. I think it's also appropriate to talk about what they could do for us as active uh, participants in that democracy. Um, you just saw recently there was a challenge to um, the cutoff date for registering to vote, which in Massachusetts is 20 days before an election. And there was a group of activists essentially who said, it's a totally arbitrary rule, <coughs> 20 days. We have the capacity and the technology to do it sooner than that. Um, so aren't we disenfranchising people with that um, arbitrary choice? And you know, the court threw it out, basically, they said, the legislature can do whatever it wants. They can make their own rules. Uh, they didn't weigh in on the merits of whether the voting deadline should be 20 days or 15 days or 10 days. They said the legislature can make its own rules. And that's true. But it proves that the rules that we set up are, in, you know, they're not handed down by God. You know, they're for us to make. And so the decisions we make about the kind of system we operate under uh, will influence what kind of democracy we have and the kinds of results that we get out of it. If we extended the deadline for people to register to vote, we'd have more people voting. We'd have a more active and engaged citizenry, and I think we'd have better policy results. And I think the exact same thing about this proposal that's come from uh, Councilor Dwight and from the Youth Commission in Northampton. It is um, a structural question for us whether we want to have a democracy that extends um, to this particular <coughs> age, and I think we absolutely do. I think the more people we have involved in our democracy, the better, the stronger the de our democracy is generally, and the better results that are gonna come out of it. Um, so that's another reason why I think this is an excellent idea. I'm, I'm proud that this is coming forward. I'm proud that Northampton is gonna join other towns across Massachusetts in, in pushing for it. So I'd like to thank everyone who had a role in crafting it. Are there other members of the council like to speak? Councilor Pitbull. Um, I, too, uh, agree with everything that Councilor Dwight has said. I'm, I'm particularly drawn to the argument that if we uh, provide an opportunity for 16 and 17 year olds to become involved in the electoral process, and I take the point that we can't take it for granted, we have to work to make that happen and establish that as a practice, that that's going to carry forward and, and uh, enrich and rejuvenate our democracy in many ways, I hope. So I think it's a, a, an excellent idea. I'm totally supportive. I'm just curious, there's been references made to Ashfield and Lowell. Uh, are there other communities in the, uh, in the Commonwealth that have advanced this to the legislature at this point? Uh, if I may, yeah, there are a few other communities that have tried in, in some in the hills along with Ashfield. Um, uh, Initially, I believe when Lowell first introduced it, and this is almost three years ago, maybe even more, um, it was summarily rejected by um, Secretary Galvin uh, before it even got, it said it wasn't feasible or plausible without much more further explanation. They tried again, and I believe they were successful, but then it didn't survive beyond that. I don't know if it survived a vote. I'm not really sure what happened. It just sort of dissipated, which was too bad. I mean, they, they actually had a really, uh, a really well-organized campaign by youth. Now, here, here's the other problem, of course. Uh, Council Murphy alluded to it when uh, in Legislative Matters. It's a long process. So someone starting at 16 lobbying for the right to vote will turn 18 in the course of that and perhaps their vehemence for the support. That's not true of Aaron, of course, Aaron is 20 and is still carrying water for this pro uh, this proposal. But um, I think there's, there's, <coughs> there's a wave that's cresting that we have an opportunity to ride here that didn't exist two years ago. There was a certain patronizing cynicism that came with it. And it also comes in, in the context of depressing votes. Um, as an objective, depressing votes is usually 
any particular party or group that's inclined to try and game the system by by actually limiting people's opportunity to vote and restricting their vote. And we feel, regardless of how anyone votes, that expanding the vote is literally, supposedly, what we're supposed to be representing. So I think right now there's the energy, um, there is the opportunity. I also think it helps um, possibly coming from a city uh, such as Lowell, but Northampton with the same organizing, but it also to work in conjunction with other communities that have also tried, I think, if we all, uh, if, well, obviously, regardless, we're not going to have a seniority representing the legislative delegation that's from this district that has applied for these. Um, but at the same time, I think if we combine forces that we have a much better prospect of having this be realized. Other comments from the council? Um, Councilor Klein. Um, I just wanted to say, I, we've talked about this before and uh, talked about it in legislative matters. Um, I'm a huge supporter of this um, and I'm really excited to see it through to um, bring it to the state legislature. Um, the, there's a term for, um, for young people, people of color, unmarried women are called the rising American electorate. And it's um, a block that constitutes, I think, 60% of um, eligible voters. So speaking at 18, but if we are looking, and you know, of course I'm talking at the national level, but just kind of to, to take this theoretically, um, to, to look at how at the, at the national level, if we bring 16-year-olds into <coughs> voting, we're strengthening even more that rising American electorate that is the new face of the United States. And I think that we, it behooves us to really um, support that rising electorate to um, come into its own and have a voice in this country in a way that we haven't seen. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's an exciting movement, and it's a movement that I um, personally couldn't be happier about, and uh, bringing it to an even younger age than the 18-year-olds, <coughs> to adding them to this rising American electorate, I think is just, uh, you know, something that we should all support. Council for Ward 3. Um, yeah, I'd just like to add that, um, you know, I'd like to thank the Youth Commission once again. I mean, it seems like every year the Youth Commission comes forward with something like this that is, you know, a, it's, it's a game changer, you know, whether it's the plastic bags, whether it's the benches, you know, painting the benches downtown. And um, uh, so I, I, I want to thank uh, Councillor Dwight and the Youth Commission for, for the work around this. and. Um, it, it's exciting. I want to say it, it's cool. It's really cool that uh, that we're able to vote on this. So thank you. Council Labarge, did you have your hand? Thank you. Um, I want to thank also the um, Youth Commission and Councilor Dwight, which you've been on it for quite a while and working with our youths and significant difference here. And <coughs> you brought up about what occurred during the Vietnam War. And my husband and I talked about that last night. And at that point, as soon as you got out of high school, they were drafted. They didn't want to, but they were drafted. I look at our youth here in the city of Northampton speaking out, which was the march, one of the biggest that we've had, and our youth being highly involved and working together and we all were out there, and it showed how vibrant our community is for our youth. I think they are asking us for something that is common sense. I do not see a difference between 16 years old and 17 years old and an 18-year-old person. I think that they should have the right to be able to vote at 16. You have stated in this resolution that they do work. Yes, they do. And they do pay taxes because taxes come out when they work. And I know many residents on my, on my ward who are youth who do work and go to school. 
but I am very proud of our Youth Commission, and I want to thank you, Councillor Joy, also, because it's time that we show our youth what democracy is like here in the city of Northampton, and we are very proud of them. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Chair? I'll just say uh, briefly that this generation um, of young people is, is pretty much the only thing that gives me hope at this moment in time, and I think that um, I fully entrust, um, I would entrust more than just voting rights to them. I think that they um, have just shown themselves to be remarkable and thoughtful and, um, and not self-serving, and, um, and thinking of the greater good, not just of their generation, but of the world. And, um, I think this is this is really fantastic. Um, and watching them on March 24th, not only did I think the 18 and 17 year olds and 16 year olds were amazing, but there was a 13 year old who spoke more eloquently than I will ever hope in, <laughs> to speak in my life, um, and more thoughtfully and with more depth and critical thinking than um, just about any speech I've ever seen in my life. So, I uh, I think they more than deserve the right to vote. I, I entrust them with saving us, essentially. Anyone else? Um, if, I, if I can just add one more thing, I think one of the strongest arguments for me for this is a, a two-word question, why not? Um, democracy is an evolving experiment. In fact, to, to reach for a cliche, um, this is a much uttered quote from Massachusetts resident Justice Louis Brandeis about our states, that our states are laboratories of democracy for our country. So I really like the idea, and I liked, I liked Councillor Dwight's sentiments, um, to the effect that our, our cities and towns can be laboratories of democracy for our state. Um, so we should be constantly experimenting, and I see no good reason to stand in the way of, of, of this bold experiment. I think we have a lot to gain and nothing to lose by uh, extending suffrage to um, a new generation. So, Councilor Dwight. I, and I also should give credit where credit is due, and it, it, it's worth acknowledging that it was Councilor O'Donnell who planted this seed in the Youth Commission. This is almost four years ago. I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> you were 16. <laughs> but it was. It was talking about expanding voting rights to the Youth Commission. And Planted to them the notion that, hey, wait a minute, maybe we can ask for the right to vote. It was also in discussion about expanding uh, voter registration at 16, which was, it was about to be implemented. And, and you made a very cogent and compelling case to them about expanding the right to vote strengthens the democracy. It, it, it actually commits the promise of democracy, or at least starts to commit the promise of democracy. And they took that to heart. And some of them have since moved on. There, some are uh, uh, even graduated from college when was first, from when this was first talked about. But they, all of them remain committed to the notion. And so I, you got to get your props. And I think you're entitled. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But, and to give my own props to the, to the Youth Commission, like others have, it's a really always an extraordinary group of people. And this is the latest example of great work that they have done. So. I uh, join with others in thanking the Youth Commission as well. So, um, it sounds like we might be ready to vote on this. So I'll ask for a roll call of the council, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Obama. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Okay. Resolutions unanimously approved. <coughs> we'll return for a second reading uh, in August. Thank you very much. That's great. Um, we now come to <clears throat> the consent agenda. It contains the following items, which I'll read. If there are any that counselors wish to remove, please notify me. We'll vote on it separately. Um, first, approval of special meeting minutes for June 6, 2018, and regular meeting minutes for June 7, 2018, and June 21, uh, 2018. And uh, also, um, extension <coughs> of five taxi cab licenses for Jeffrey Miller of Cosmic Cab until August 17, 2018. A vote on this would be the equivalent of extending those licenses to that date. Um, next, adjustment of term length 
of Brian Campadelli on uh, term length, okay, of term length of Brian Campadelli on the License Commission uh, to expire in June 2024. Brian Campadelli of 223 Cardinal Way of Florence, um, which received the positive recommendation from the Committee on City Services in July. Next, the appointment of various people who have all also received positive recommendations from the City Services Committee. Uh, first, um, to the Arts Council, the appointment of <coughs> Esther White of 17 Summer Street, the Council on Aging, the appointment of Michael Ford of 6 Massasoit Street, uh, to the Parks and Recreation Commission, Carol Bertrand of 65 Hastings Heights in Florence, to the Planning Board, uh, George Coho of 234 State Street, and Krista Grenet of 492 Elm Street. Um, and more appointments which have also received positive recommendations, and this is again equivalent to appointing these people, to the Agricultural Commission, John Bobala, 25 Old Ferry Road, the Council on Aging, Gary Ann Butler, 46 Autumn Drive, to the Arts Council, Courtney Hummel of 320 Elm Street, um, as well as Kristen Mara, 41 William Street, Laurie Steiner of 18 Ridgewood Terrace, to the Parks and Recreation Commission, Kristen Dardano, as some know her, um, 281 Elm Street, Northampton, uh, to the Public Shade Tree Commission, Robert Postel of 44 Washington Avenue, to the Transportation and Parking Commission, uh, <coughs> Gary Hartwell of 419 Riverside Drive. Uh, is, any removals? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? So those things are approved. And we will uh, recess now for finance. Thank you. Uh, would you call the roll of uh, finance, please? Uh, Here. Present. Present. Here. Thank you. Uh, we have two sets of meetings to approve tonight, the minutes of June 7th and the minutes of June 21st. Do we have a motion on this? Second. Any discussion or changes? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. So we have a number of ordinances tonight, many of which are moving money around at the end of the, this is our last shot for the last fiscal year. Uh, the first is 18130, in order to appropriate money for capital projects from FY, the FY 2019 cash capital account. Order that the following capital projects are appropriated from the general fund FY 2019 cash capital account. Uh, Central Services, the Academy of Music Dressing Room Repairs, $10,000. Central Services, Fire Rescue Department Parking and Solar, solar Resiliency at the main headquarters, $60,000. Central Services, Memorial Hall Interior Painting, $50,000. Information Technology Services, a uh, battery backup replacement for $15,000. Planning and Sustainability Tax Title Priority Purchases for $30,000. Fire and Rescue, a hybrid staff vehicle, $40,250. Fire and Rescue EMS Supply Management System for $17,000. Fire and Rescue Entrance Security System at the main headquarters and in Florence for $15,513. A police need an animal control van for $7,237. Parks and Rec uh, playing field improvements for $15,000. A DPW traffic calming for $10,000. DPW traffic signal replacement for $35,000. And DPW wood waste disposal for $10,000 for a total on all of these items of $315,000. Do we have a motion finance? We have a motion. Second. Second. And the mayor is here if we have any questions. Yes. Councilor Barge. Could I just, by way of background, so when we do the capital improvement program, <coughs> um, we have all the projects and um, there's always a certain number that are from appropriation from free cash from other sources. There's other that's borrowing. And then these are the cash capital projects, which means that they will be included as part of the FY19 budget, or th at least the funding will be um, included as a single line item. So that $315,000 was cash capital that was approved in the FY19 budget. Um, uh, unlike the state, we actually have a budget for FY19, so now we can come forward after July 1st and actually um, request to spend the money. So these projects are the projects that were part of the capital improvement program, but I can certainly answer questions yes. that you have about um, individual. The project. animal control van, what year is that, Mayor? So the, um, the uh, and this was a project that, that again was outlined in the um, capital improvement program. Right now the, um, uh, we actually bought a used uh, 
van. It's a two, it was a 2009 Toyota Sienna uh, van. Um, it was actually, we purchased it from the out retiring um, uh, animal control officer. It's approaching 100,000 miles. And so we had been planning um, using some, uh, some uh, monies that had been set aside for this, actually for the animal control department a long, long time ago, uh, to purchase a new van. We're actually going to keep the other van as kind of a backup. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it's a van that's equipped with crates and all the equipment. That was from Willie White, correct? Um, you know, I, I, th I think it was from Nancy. Um, it was from Nancy, but I think Nancy worked a lot. Possibly so, yeah. I know that was, I think, her aunt who ran the, sh who had a shelter up there, yeah. Um, but so that was the van, and when, when she, when Nancy retired, and, uh, you know, we, we actually um, uh, purchased it from her. So, but now it's sort of getting to the end of its useful life, so we want to uh, um, have that and keep the Sienna as a backup. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on these items? Um, hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The next is 18131, <coughs> in order to reprogram funds to the Jackson Street School HVAC repair from other Northampton Public School projects. Where is the City Council appropriated $40,000 as part of the FY18 capital plan to repair the HVA system in the Jackson Street School cafeteria? And where is the City Council appropriated an additional $150,000? as part of the FY19 capital plan to repair the HVA system in Jackson Street School cafeteria when the work was determined to be more extensive, and whereas the bids for the project have been open, additional funds are necessary to complete the work, and capital projects with surplus funds have been identified, order that $38,629 of the remaining balance of the Northampton Public Schools brick facade at the high school project, and um, $2,966.38 uh, of the remaining balance of the Northampton Public Schools JFK Pool Lockers project be reprogrammed to add $190,000 previously appropriated for the Northampton Public Schools Jackson Street School Cafeteria HVAC project, bringing the total appropriated for the repairs to $231,595.38. Do we have a motion to finance? Second. Second. Sure. Um, any know, questions? This is a case where we had a project in the capital uh, plan of over two years and um, when the final bids came in, it's a little bit higher than we had projected two years earlier. So we're going to use um, funds from finished projects where there's remaining balances and just transfer those um, into this to be able to get that work um, started. And I was going to, I think we made note of it on the agenda, but we were going to ask if we could have two readings on these capital related projects just because we want to get them going um, during the summer construction season. Um, so. That's the only other note on this one. And with the, when we get to the full meeting. That's exactly right. I just wanted to let you know in finance that that's where I have. Uh, no other questions for the mayor on this one? Then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, the next one is 18132. In order to transfer $105,000, $105, $105,147.24, from the FY unused, FY18 unused earned sick leave to compensated absences reserve fund. Order that the amount of $105,147.24 be transferred from the FY18 unused earned leave account to the compensated absences reserve fund for the future payment of accrued liabilities for compensated absences due any employee or full-time officer of the city upon the termination of their employment or the full-time officer's uh, employment. Do we have a motion? In finance? Second. Um, this is a Putting in reserve for the same purpose. Yeah, this is a fund we established two or three years ago when a state law changed allowing, you know, allowing cities and towns to set up this fund. So any unused balances just flow to it. It's only for that purpose and, um, and it's there in reserve. We obviously have to budget a certain amount every <coughs> year, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there will be retirements or you know, people leaving in that particular fiscal year. So. And this mostly happens when they retire. Exactly. Um, they leave employment, but for better things. Exactly, yes, yes. All right, then again, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, 18133 has been withdrawn, correct? Uh, that is correct. Yep. So uh, 18134, 
upon the recommendation of Mayor David Narkowitz, the Conservation Commission and the Office of Planning and Sustainability, this is an order to authorize funding for the Rocky Hill Greenway multi-use trail. Order that whereas the open space recreation multi-use plan 2018 to 25 recommends developing the Rocky Hill Greenway multi-use trail through the Burt's Bog Greenway and whereas the city purchased and permanently protected the Burt's Bog Greenway uh, for open space and said multi-use trail plan under Mass General uh, <coughs> Chapter 40, Section 8C, whereas the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursable grants to cities and towns to support trails through the land and water conservation um, fund act. And whereas uh, the Rocky Hill Greenway multi-use trail through Burt's Bog Greenway will cost an estimated $400,000. Now, therefore, it be ordered the $400,000 is appropriated for such improvements further that to meet the appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow $400,000 under Mass General Ross, uh, Chapter 44, Subsection 7.3 or other uh, applicable statutes. Further, that the mayor is authorized to contract for any federal, state, or other aid available for the project, including any grant from the Division of Conservation Services of the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs under the Land Water Conservation Fund and to take such other actions as are necessary to carry out other terms, purposes, and conditions of this grant to be administered by the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Further, that any grants or donations shall be used to reimburse funds used for the project. Do we have a motion? Second. So this is um, a fairly common order. Uh, usually Mr. Fiden would be here presenting it, but he's out of town. Um, so the city is actually going to apply for state grant uh, to be able to hopefully fund this bike trail if, if uh, we are successful. Um, and this is one of two types of state grants where we, um, to show the city's sort of support for the project, um, we um, ask you to adopt this order. Um, we don't have any intention of appropriating the money or borrowing the money. The, the goal is to be able to show the sort of the, the commitment of the city to do it. Um, and then <coughs> if we get the grant, which we hope we will, um, then uh, obviously we would, you know, construct the project. And then typically what happens is at the end of that year, um, you know, we'll come forward and ask you to rescind this authorization. Um, so it's, I think it's a familiar process um, and we're hopeful that um, we'll be able to secure the grant. This is a piece of property that you approve the preservation of and, um, and this is one more place we want to expand our, our trail system. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Um, I talked with Wayne before he left, and this is the one mayor that we had, I think there was like 350 letters sent out to abutters mm -hmm. on preserving all this conservation land and also the property of Doug Coles, which was included with it, and affordable housing. We saved a tremendous amount of land, and we all supported that when that um, ordinance came in. This is what people were asking for, was to have the multiple tra you know, trails coming in so that we can start connecting. Mm -hmm. And this is the right way to go with our property because this is what the residents wanted. Definitely, definitely. So again, um, Mr. Fiden is a uh, master grants and so uh, hopefully his uh, streak will continue and we'll be able to get <coughs> this one and, and get to work on that new section of the trail. So thanks thanks for your support for that, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Skira. Um, so the grant would cover the entire 400000 hopefully? Um, that's my understanding as it's written. I don't know that there's been any engineering or any, I know it's sort of a suspiciously um, round number um, <laughs> as we sometimes encounter in, uh, in these kinds of things. Um, but if there were additional costs, um, typically, uh, know Mr. Fiden as you know would do fundraising or in some cases apply for CPA dollars but um, my sense is uh, that this would be a significant um, enough money to begin some part of the trail so yeah uh, would, would this project proceed only if the grant comes through um, I think that well it certainly would proceed in terms of we wouldn't borrow the money and and do it that way I think that if we weren't able to secure the grant, then again, we would most likely um, try to pursue other avenues. Uh, you know, again, to either <coughs> private fundraising, um, you know, working with the Friends group, which has done that in the past, um, perhaps a CPA application. Um, but, um, you know, this is one that, this is a grant that we've been fairly successful securing each year. Um, so hopefully we'll be successful yeah but we so I think we'd still want to try to pursue the project 
Um, but again, but not through bonding, not through bonding or uh, at this point. Yeah. Thank you. If it did, it would have to come through the formal capital program, right. et cetera. So, any other questions on this one? And uh, hearing none, all in favor of, of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> the next, uh, this, the, these are the transfers. It's 18.135, an order for FY18 end of the budget year transfers. Order that the following FY18 budgetary transfers be entered hereby made. Uh, Water Enterprise. Uh, general fund for archi architecture and engineering is going to receive $55,000. Um, that is going to come from Water Enterprise interest on debt for long-term debt. Water Enterprise treatment uh, architecture and engineering is going to receive $65,000. That's going to come from Water Enterprise principal debt. Uh, that's where the 65 comes from. Solid waste enterprise landfill for uh, vehicular supplies is going to get $967. It's going to come from the solid waste landfill cell closure. Solid waste landfill cell closure is going to get $9,992. That's going to come from solid waste enterprise phase 3A closure. General Fund Highways, architectural engineering is going to get $27,000. That's going to come from General Fund Highway salaries permanent. General Fund Highways Street Paving and Marking is going to get $100,000, and that's going to come from General Fund Highways Street Paving and Marking. So, And Information Technology, uh, Technology and Communications is going to get $6,600. That's going to come from uh, Information Technology's permanent salaries. So all in all, $264,559 is going to shift around in, in, in interdepartment transfers for different purposes. Do we have a motion in finance? Move to approve. I mean, move positive recommendation. Second. Thank you. Questions for the mayor? No, just, you know, though the fiscal year ended on June 30th, we have until July 12th to make final adjustments to the budget, and these are some um, items that we want to true up so that they don't end in a negative balance. So this is all money that was appropriated as part of the overall budget. We're just moving some items around, some excesses to some other areas. So. Councilor Scarra. So just to clarify, because I heard some laughing about this, the street paving and marking going to street paving and marking, it's going from OOM to OM, or OM is going to OOM. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. It's going, which are two separate line items in the budget, other than ordinary maintenance and, and ordinary maintenance. Yeah. So, yeah. Can, can you expand on why that is? Um, I think because um, most likely uh, funds were drawn out of one uh, for a project was excess in another to cover it. So um, that's my best explanation, yeah. Because my understanding of OOM is essentially extraordinary or unanticipated. Uh, yeah, it's not really extraordinary. It just tends to be, um, so for example, in the um, police department, we have, um, you know, we have P&S and then we have regular O&M, which is just kind of general kinds of maintenance things. Then we have OOM, uh, which we actually use for um, like the police car purchases every year. Um, so my sus I suspect that we had some, we, we, we do a similar thing in DPW where we have the sort of like capital-like projects, but they are so recurring that we actually build them into the budget. So <coughs> that's the like OOM. So, um, so again, I, I don't, I can, uh, I can't give you the, the exact what the expenditure was that triggered that. Um, but again, we have $100,000 um, available. It just happens to be in a different line item, so we're going to move it's it. Just up. me catching up with the acronyms. That's, that's, that's fine. There's there's many of them to catch up yeah. on. Any other question for the mayor on these? Though hearing none, then all in favor of positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 The last is eight one thirty six in order to authorize intermunicipal agreements for the paramedic intercept services for the town of Hadley. Order that whereas Mass General Law Section 40, sub, uh, Section 4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units, and whereas Mass General Law uh, Chapter 40, Section 4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the city council and mayor, and whereas the city of North Hampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities. Therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law Section 40, um, Chapter 40, Section 4A, the City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into an agreement with the Town of Hadley for paramedic intercept services for FY19 and FY20, and therefore shall automatically renew for a subsequent one-year period unless terminated as part of the agreement, however, not to exceed 25 years. 
We have a motion to finance. Make a motion. Second. Second. So um, we've ha we have <coughs> other um, paramedic intercept agreements with multiple other towns. Um, I think actually the the order that you're going to take a second reading on tonight references that on the second page. Um, this is a new agreement um, with Hadley. Um, some of you may know that Hadley um, uh, and Amherst um, had a parting of ways on ambulance service. And um, they, Amherst used to provide all the ambulance service for Hadley. Um, and this year, uh, there was a change. And so Hadley is now using a private um, uh, provider to do their ambulance service um, and so we are um, this is an agreement to provide um, intercept um, in cases where they do need a, um, a backup um, at a paramedic level to be able to um, basically meet a patient um, and and transport a patient um, again we have these agreements with many other communities around us uh, we didn't have one with Hadley because of the arrangement that they had with Amherst so um, that's why this is new for 2019. Any other questions for the mayor on this one? And hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Um, I know of no other new business, so a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll go through some financial orders now. Uh, first is 18.130 in order to appropriate money for capital projects in fiscal year 20. 19 cash capital account. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. Main second. Any discussion? Um, roll call, please. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor White? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Donald? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Suspend Rule 14. There is no Rule 14. But the suspension of rules. Just yes. Suspend, yes. yes. Rules. So made and second. Suspend the rules. Any discussion? Suspension of rules. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Second reading. Is there a second? Second. Made and second. Any discussion on second reading? Whenever we're ready, we have a roll call. Okay. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. And Councillor Carney. Yes. Okay. That order is approved on second reading. Next is 18.131, order to reprogram funds at Jackson Street School, HVAC repairs from other MPS projects. To approve. Okay. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Suspend the rule. Okay. Is there a motion? Second. Uh, second on that? Okay. Any discussion, suspension of rules? If not, all those in favor say hi. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Second reading. Is there a second on second reading? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion on second reading? Then a roll call when we're ready. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. The order is approved on second reading. The next is 18.132 in order to transfer $105,147.24 from FY18 unused earned leave to a compensated absences reserve fund. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Okay. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Klein. Yes. Move to suspend rules. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Rules are suspended. Is there a motion on second reading? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Murphy. Yes. <coughs> the next order has been withdrawn, so we'll skip to 18.134 in order to authorize funding for the Rocky Hill Greenway multi use trail. So, motion to, to approve. approve. Second. 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 Made and seconded. Any discussion? Um, roll call, please. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. 
Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Yes. Yeah. Suspend. Suspend rules. Do we want two readings on this? We didn't need it was to actually not a request. Oh, I just got excited. For this one. I know. Right. <laughs> no, I know. I, I rescind my motion to suspend <laughs> rule. I rescind my second. <laughs> yeah. No eagerness for the Rocky Hill Greenway multi use. They can wait. No no to wait. In that case, we will proceed to another one where we may have an opportunity for suspension of rules. Um, 18.135. Uh, an order for fiscal year 2018 end of year budget transfers. Second. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Move suspension of rules. Sure. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Suspension of rules. If not, all those in favor say aye. And aye. All those, any abstentions? Rules are suspended. Second reading. Is there a second, second. on that? Hey, that was a second. Okay. <laughs> any discussion? <laughs> Look, I'm auctioning something. <laughs> um, if there's no discussion on second reading, I'll ask for a roll call. Of the council. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Okay. That is approved on second reading as well. Now 18.136, an order to authorize intermunicipal agreement for paramedic intercept services for Hadley. To approve. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion on this order? Roll call, please. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. <coughs> yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labard. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. And Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Suspend the rule. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Suspension of rules? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those any abstentions? Rules suspended. Is there a second on the second reading? Second. second. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labard. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. And Councillor Carney. Yes. That order is approved on second reading. Now we have several orders which are on second reading. First is 18.124, an order to grant utility easement under Masonic Street parking lot. Is there a motion on this? So moved. Second. Approved. In second to do approve. Any discussion? Um, if not, roll call. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labard. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. <laughs> Orders proven second reading. Now we have 18.126 in order to authorize Northampton School Committee to accept a gift of surplus technology equipment from Smith College. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call when we're ready. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Klein. Yes. It's proven second reading. The final order is 18.127, order to authorize fiscal year 2019 intermunicipal agreements. Is motion approved. approved. Made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, roll call. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. And Councillor Labar. Yes. Um, there are two ordinances which have not yet been approved <coughs> the Committee on Legislative Matters. They are 18.137, an ordinance relative to parking on King Street, and 18.138, an ordinance relative to parking on Adair Place. Second. So we're referring these to legislative matters, but the Transportation Parking Commission as well, or just yep. legislative matters? Well, like they come from Transportation Parking. They've already been yeah. they parking. They come to see. So, so just the, legislative. So just legislative matters? Okay. Um, for the purposes of information. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I move them as a group. It was yep. Yeah. Okay. So a motion to move them as a group is made in second. Second. Yeah. So relative to the motion of referral, just so we understand it, could someone explain? just basically what we're looking at. Um, it's good to know for us to know what we're... Okay, so uh, the first one has to do, the, the parking on King Street has to do with creating a 15-minute 
a spot in the area of Sutter Meats um, that um, uh, this has been approved by the TPC to create one 15-minute space and um, we're sending it over to legislative matters. The other has to do with um, a dare place and um, and the um, so this is at some point there was a request to I, I believe it had to do with the correct the signage on the street and when the city went in and did that they discovered that everything was incorrect so they put it so in the diagrams that have been shared with you, oh, isn't the TPC fun? In the diagrams that the, has been shared with you, you are seeing the corrected condition on a dare place. And it, it is not what the residents were wanted <coughs> or what, um, what had traditionally been going on there. So therefore, the correction, uh, the, 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 what we're proposing is to go back to what was originally being enforced on a dare place. Okay. So that's, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's, it's on a dare place itself or Prospect Street? It's on a dare place. Okay. Right. None of this is on Prospect. Right. Hey, you might want to look at the actual language. It seems confusing that it would say on a dare place on the northwesterly side from Prospect Street. It's on the corner. To a point 60 feet northeasterly yeah. from a dare place. From where a dare and Prospect intersect. Right? From and the it should edge be of a dare. from Prospect. Just something for the committee that deals with this kind of fun stuff to look at. <laughs> okay, but this is still the question of referral. It's just general for public information, so. Good. So, all those in favor of the referral, thank you for the description. There's a motion to refer them as a group? Well, yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, yep. I just wanted an explanation for the benefit oh. of the public. So, the motion on the floor is to refer them as a group to legislative matters. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So, they're referred. Thank you. And thank you to the chair for the description. Um, now, we have two ordinances that are actually for voting tonight. Um, first is 18.111, an ordinance relative to parking on Pleasant Street. Um, this is first reading. Um, it was recommended positively, sponsored by the Transportation Parking Commission, referred to legislative matters, and got a positive recommendation there. Um, we should pull this one up, um, maybe the map at least. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve for purpose of discussion Second. okay um, so the motions on the floor um, the language it would change is in the schedule of where parking is prohibited where it currently says on Pleasant Street on the easterly side from Holyoke Street to 177 <coughs> feet southerly presumably of Holyoke Street it would change that second part to from Holyoke Street to Hockenham Road it would elsewhere change it on Pleasant Street on the southwesterly side from a point 258 feet southeasterly of Hampton Avenue, whereas now it says a point 318 feet, it would change it to a point 300, excuse me, 457 feet southeasterly of Hampton Avenue. And it would strike in its entirety um, the prohibition which is currently in effect on Pleasant Street on, on the westerly side. How many sides is Pleasant Street has. Have is it a cube? Or um, a point fifty one feet. <laughs> it fits the mention. You really need to do some work on Pleasant Street. Oh, no. Fuller Drive. It's basically a Mobius strip. Yeah. Um, a point fifty one feet northerly from Michaelman Avenue to a point one hundred and two feet southerly. So that would be struck, and in its place it would be Pleasant Street, just westerly from Millbank Place to Hockenham Road. Um, it would also make a, an amendment on um, the, the schedule that contains on-street parking meter zones. It would change the, the place on Pleasant Street on the westerly side, which is currently from Kingsley Avenue to a point 150 feet northerly from Michaelman Avenue. It would just extend it all the way to Michaelman Avenue. So those are the text changes. And we have the picture on the screen, which is more descriptive. And I 
ask the chair of the TPC maybe to describe in English so people have three different descriptions. And I'm really strong. So, um, so basically what this is is we have had all of the Pleasant Street <clears throat> improvements which has changed parking and um, in and, and, and sidewalks and in crosswalks and this is the result is that we've lost some parking spaces spa some spaces have been moved to the other side of the street um, and so we've already approved this plan the plan has been implemented I, I rode my bike here up Pleasant Street I can tell you that all of these features are there and so this is to have um, you know, city ordinance line up with what we have on the ground okay <laughs> Good. Any other discussion then? <laughs> Councilor Bidwell. So is, what is the net gain or loss along Pleasant Street of parking spaces when all is said and done? Do we, do we, do we know that? I know some have gone, some have come back. Do it's we, a net gain. I, I can't tell you the numbers. It's definitely a net gain. Okay. We added parking. Oh, okay. I will get you the number for second reading. Thank you. Which is already in effect. True. <laughs> this, this, this We're going <laughs> to go counter. Useful, useful, useful information. So. We will also go into the fifth dimension mm -hmm. and in that time span where time doesn't really That's qualify. right. Since Prospect, uh, Pleasant Street has six different sides, cars <laughs> can park in the same space. Uh, Councilor Neff. Well, I, I, I want to add, so I will get back to you with the exact number. One of the areas where we did add parking spaces was at the end of, at the entrance to Hockenham, we, we added eight spaces there. So while some on that easterly side of uh, Pleasant near <coughs> the bike shop is, um, those spaces went away. Some of them went over that way mm -hmm. to Hockenham. And I think due to the work of the council from Ward 3, they've been painted which has cleared up some of well, the confusion about parking in that area? The city was very, re our yeah. administrators were very responsive and uh, those spaces appeared, yeah. the markings appeared very quickly yeah. as part of this project. That's great. Any other questions? I, I think what's happening on Pleasant Street is, is absolutely wonderful. So happy to support the ordinance that conforms to reality. Um, any other discussion? Um, then we can have a roll call on this, please. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay. Um, if not, I would ask for a roll call of the council. Yes. 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 Okay. The ordinance approved. Any new business this evening? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. That's all, folks.